You may remember a while back we had a look at a BC-348 that belonged to Barry. And this is another one of his uh, legacies. His homemade 160 metre transmitter. Now, all this to get maybe 80 to 100 watts of uh, AM on 160 metres, it's a bit overkill. That's the RF deck. The modulator. Two massive power supplies that will probably supply a 500 watt transmitter quite well. And uh, all the accessories that came with it there. So all these things have to be connected up to make it work. I hope all the connecting cables are there. Let's have a look at uh, how it was built. It's got two power supplies. I don't know why it needs two. I think one of these big supplies would be more than enough instead of having one for the RF and one for the modulator. And it doesn't even modulate very well. We've got lovely block capacitors filled with lovely CFCs. Massive transformers. The wiring underneath is very neat. All the nice wire wound resistors. Even made in Australia. Underneath the main supply, it's a real piece of art. It's even got that old Waltham's disposals wire I haven't seen for decades. You don't use those diode blocks. You use proper discrete rectifiers. Now that card would most likely be the grid bias for the RF output stage. An official RCA 2N3055. Now unfortunately the rest of the device isn't made anywhere near as well. Look at that flimsy aluminium panels. The final output stage with two 807s. And there we have the crystal oscillator and driver. The output coilies and the pie circuit and two salvage broadcast gangs. One bad design is the crystal plugs in at the side of the chassis so if you lift it up and move it around you'll break the crystal. Underneath it's certainly neat enough. Unreliable Jukon capacitors. It's not super style council. Now the modulator, it's even got an official spark gap. A special homemade modulation transformer. Barry must have spent a lot of time wiring this up.
Although this sort of construction means you can lift each individual unit without wrecking yourself, it does mean you have to worry about all the interconnecting cables and five separate mains connectors. At least all the connectors have different ends so you can't make a mistake. I've wired all the complex interconnecting cables so I can test this device out, see if it works. Well here we go, I hope it doesn't blow a fuse or something. We'll plug a matic it in. Uh, it's lighting up. And I think, oh look, we're getting some Gary Powers coming out. Massive, 90 watts. I'll give it a tweak matic about as much as I can get out of it. There we are, massive 90 watts from this pile of junk. We'll see how it modulates. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. Hello, test, VK testing. One, two, three, four, five. We'll look at the oscilloscope trace. We'll look at the. Uh, well, first, we'll have a listen to it. That's what it sounds like. It's not very good, is it? It's very sort of muffly and indistinct. The sound sounds like it's um, overloaded uh, modulator. One, two, three, four, five. Testing. We we'll look at the <laughs> look at the waveform. It's not very intelligible, is it? Yeah, testing. One, two, three. Well, that tells the story, doesn't it? It's uh, not modulating very well. It's probably you know maybe sixty percent. It's not going to negative modulation. There should be a line along zero point there, uh, negative modulation or zero and oh no, don't even need to put tone in to look at that the the tops are rounded as well so it's, that's why it's got that muffled indistinct sound not very good at all I, after hearing yeah, not very good at all that indistinct muffled sound and that's uh, the reason why you're looking at it now it's not very good one dangerous design is he's got uh, 700 volts going through those belling lee connectors that connect the uh, the pa unit to the modulation choke could be a nasty surprise for someone what a lot of junk <laughs> for almost 100 watts of am you could make something even with old uh, components much more compact than this If this was my transmitter, I would either run it off a solid state amp or convert that uh, to a class B output stage or a modulator. It's the only way to go really. Then you'd have super modulation. But the other thing is that trying to get 100 watts out of two 807s, that's basically running them at their limit. If something goes wrong, they'll wreck. So uh, that's the other problem. I'd be having four in there or something. If I wanted um, 100 watts, continuous, no problems.